So as you guys know, I have a lot of solar on the top of this van. And I thought I had way, way, like overkill solar, like way too many watts. Turns out I installed a Victron smart controller instead of those cheap eBay ones. If you look back into previous videos, you might see them in the background. On paper, I have 2,100 watts on this roof and I'm only getting 500. Then it clicked. I was completely getting confused between the relationships of the MPPTs, of voltages and amps that come out of the MPPT. You see, it turns out that the volts that the solar panels are operating on truly matter more than I thought they did. Now the confusion around solar panels, watts, amps, volts, I honestly wasn't even looking at volts and the amps and the watts seemed very similar. And I was always pretty confused about this. So I just went with whatever is giving me the most amps, but it's not actually quite that simple. You see, what I actually realized was that the panel voltage meant that the amps stay relatively low and the wattage stays relatively low. So say you might have two solar panels, one at 500, well, both at 500 watts, both say that they deliver nine amps, but it's that volt difference. And so what I'm seeing now is that there are a lot of solar panels out there that might say that they deliver nine amps at say 35 watts. That actually can translate through your MPPT, which drops those 36 watts back down to 12 volts for your battery and delivers a higher ampage. Once I had a quick chat to the expert, ChatGDP, I really understood where I went wrong with my solar panels. Because originally I figured, well, if I have a $120 eBay panel that on paper seems exactly the same as a Renology panel or a Victron panel or a Sun Power panel uh, that say that they deliver nine amps, but my Sun Power panel delivering the same amps, same wattages, except the Sun Power panel is five times more expensive. I don't have a 36 or a 48 or a whatever watt system, I only have a 12 volt system. What does that mean for me? It means I'm dumb. That's what that means. <laughs> no, not really, because I feel like potentially a lot of people get this confused because what I see a lot, obviously with the amount of solar panels we have, we had a lot of people going, gee, that's a lot of solar. And they asked me how many watts. And you know, I say, oh, you know, 360 a panel or whatever. But that really doesn't tell you much. It really doesn't tell you much at all because the true multiplier for amps into your battery is actually the voltage that that solar panel applies through your MPPT. Your MPPT, which is very important, makes sense now, very important to understand to get a good one because that's the thing that's going to convert those higher volts down to a higher amperage to fill your batteries faster. Now, what this means for me personally, and I think that you're gonna love this, that means that I get to go from six panels to two panels. I found a sun power, hang on, I'm gonna have to look it up so I can tell you properly. Uh, I'll include the link in, the link and the details and stuff in the description, but a 455 watt sun power performance P7 <gasps> bifacial black solar panel. The naming schemes are almost as worse as Nintendo consoles. Um, but they deliver a max power of 12 amps over 35 volts. Now two of those is going to deliver 20 more amps than the six panels I've got already. Amazing. That means I get so much more roof space. All right, I figured I might as well read the the maths 
from ChatGDP that kind of has led me to this spot. Uh, the Victron MPPT will convert that power into a lower voltage and a higher current, which is your amps. Ideally, conserving most of the watts minus some small efficiency losses, usually around 95%. Now, taking the ideal conversion, amps at 12 volts equals 155 watts divided by 12 is 38 amps. After the MPPT efficiency, around about 95%, that 38 amps then turns into about 36 amps. So that's kind of how the voltages kind of affect the panel. So the panel itself, the one that I am looking at getting, is 12.78 amps at 35 volts. That gives us at about 456 watts. So now my system is not only going to be more powerful, I'm going to have more roof space. The system is going to be more optimized and give me more power, especially at midday. So you tell me, have you ever struggled with solar like this? It's taken me, what, like two years of van life full time. I'm not an electrician to learn the difference and the multiplier of volts into a solar panel and help me choose something that's efficient for me. Let me know if you've made any big mistakes with electrical setups or solar in your setup or if you just got it all pre-done and you don't know a thing about electricity, that's fine. Uh, but I've learned a lot from even just this little instance, let alone what I've learned about cabling and wiring. Oh, it's crazy. I, to be honest, I love learning all this stuff about electricity. I have a history in computers, so I love it. We're, of course, we're gonna film putting these panels on. It's gonna be a while yet, because the two panels I want are about 750 Australian, and I don't have that money right now. <laughs> so, uh, stay tuned, we will be putting them on the roof eventually, and we do have some big plans for the other space that we're gonna put on the roof. So, if you like that, travel vlogs and food, especially van life tips and tricks, we are going to be ramping up to two videos a week, one that is more vlog style and then the other that is a little bit more informative, still with the aesthetics of a blog. A blog? A vlog. You know what I mean. Uh, so thank you very much for watching this one and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!